Cam, how you doing, man? It's Joe Cook from WAPT down in Mississippi. I'm doing good. How you doing? My my first question is, man, what do you think draft day will mean to you to, when you get your name called and, you know, representing Yazoo County, Mississippi? What do you think that moment will be like for you? Uh, that moment will be very, very special because it will show the young guys back in the county, you know, it's possible. You know, you know, it's, it's, you can do it. You know, you can do as much as you can, but you know you know that you can make it, you know. So it'll be very important for me for the guys that's back there. And a quick follow-up, what did you learn maybe about yourself with the opt-out and, you know, your training and just seeing the game from afar and uh, knowing that the last game film was from your All-American season? What was this uh, past year like for you and preparing for this draft? Um, Just being – just being disciplined with just going over my film, being smart on like how I carry myself, being smart on how I watch film and the small things and small details that you know I need to look over on film and stuff like that. So I just basically just went over everything from my old season and just you know just try to improve on it. Teresa. Kenneth, what did you do after the uh, opt-out decision? I mean, were you at home? And I mean, with COVID and all the restrictions, how are you, what did you do to try to, you know, stay in shape, continue your physical conditioning and, and, and all that? And, and how tough was that decision? I mean, you know, you had family reasons, obviously, but, you know, and then watching Memphis continue on, that, that couldn't have been easy for you to, to go through the last few months. Yeah, so as soon as my opt-out, um, I started training here in Memphis at Excel uh, training facility. And after that, uh, November 1st, I traveled to Orlando, Florida to train down there up until Saturday. And, you know, the decision, you know, it was a hard decision. Had a family that passed away from it, you know, during love, love those guys, love my auntie and uncle. So, I mean, you know, it was a kind of difficult decision, you know, leaving the team that I love dearly, you know, and, you know, just, you know, just just getting myself prepared and just being being in shape and doing what I got to do to prepare for myself. Evan? Kenny, kind of going off of that a little bit, just kind of how, when you made your decision, was it a very easy decision given what happened with your family? And also just kind of, you know, has that kind of, a, you know, I know family has been so important to you just even when that meant, but just how much has that just kind of driven you even more now to keep pushing as you continue your career? Uh, just, the, you know, just getting the chance to talk to my family over about COVID, and, you know, my family passing away. So, I mean, it, it was a little tough, tough decision. You know? um, I love football. So, you know, it was really a little, you know, tough decision to do. So, they had to do what best for them. Matias? Good afternoon, Kenneth. Matheus from Brazil. Uh, for, for the running back position, uh, maybe the opt-out was not like the worst because you have one year without taking any tackles, without taking big hits, going to big guys on college. Uh, how do you think that the NFL sees that? Because the, the running back is a position that teams like have to have the value, but a lot of teams like to have two or three guys what do you think that not having a season, taking a lot of hits, can maybe help you during this process? Well, for one, my skill set is very, very different. You know, I can play in between the tackle, I can play outside the tackle, and also line up in the slot. So my position is very, very different from these other running backs that's in the draft, just taking those hits that were in the season. But, you know, just getting my body right, um, you know, just being – prepare, you know, they see what I did back in 2018. So, I mean, um, it ain't too much that, you know, I can do, but they can show them. But the only thing I can do is, you know, prepare myself for the next level and be ready for this pro day tomorrow. So that's Thanks Nick. a lot. Good luck. Nick, go ahead. Uh, hey, Kenneth. Um, a few questions. One question. Uh, you were a quarterback in high school, and obviously that's a path that some receivers and, and running backs take. How do you think that helped you 
at the very least, you know, in terms of vision, in terms of reading defenses, mm-hmm. especially when you're processing guys at the line. And, and another question, have you had any contact with the Pittsburgh Steelers? Um, I um, played quarterback in high school, and that, that led up to, you know, I was a, a run pass guy, so I probably was going to run first before I throw it in high school, but I had a lot of, you know, pass and yards. But, you know, they just come with being comfortable with running the ball, having the ball in your hand. And, and yes, I have been a contemporary. Gonzalo? Yeah, Gonzalo, what Hey, Kenneth here, Gonzalo from Nauja in Argentina. Uh, I want to ask you, uh, which player do you like to see when you when you watching the, the at the professional level? What 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 uh, what are your favorite players to to watch? Just in the NFL. Yes. Um, I like to watch. I like to watch the court, Evan Kamara. Uh, um, I like to watch basically everybody. You know. You can take skills from each and every player to the receivers too. So you can always take little bits of pieces from from the receivers and take either bits of pieces from the biggest running backs down to the smallest running backs in the NFL. So I kind of watch everybody and just like pull pull from those guys to include into my game. So that's kind of what I do. I watch everybody. Jason. Hey Kenneth, uh, Jason Butt with the Atlanta Journal Constitution. Um, you know, between you, uh, Antonio Gibson, Darrell Henderson, Tony Pollard, what is it about Memphis that has uh, been able to put out such good running backs over these last few years? We're a system that pumps out, you know, athletes. We're a system that pump out playmakers. We're, got, we're a system that, that do multiple things with players that you can line them up in different different positions and just get them in space and let them do what they do, what they've been doing all their life is run the ball. So, I mean – you know, just putting it, putting me, myself, and those other guys in position to just be great. So that's what this program is all about, you know. Yeah. And then a quick follow of have you had contact with the Atlanta Falcons uh, since the process started? Oh, uh, yes. Thank you. Alex? Irony. Uh, Alex Fleming, Florida Sun. Um, the gentleman from the Atlanta Journal Constitution almost took my question. I don't want to compare you to an Antonio Gibson, but can you speak on us how you differ from Antonio Gibson and where you would like to play if you had the choice? Um, I would say me and Antonio Gibson is kind of similar, you know. Um, I still say it's kind of similar, but I'm a guy that plays running back before I play receiver. So, um, you know, just being that guy that can, you know, be in the backfield and, you know, have great eyes, great vision, great feet, great explosion, you know, that, that will separate me from him. And also him just being as strong as he can, you know, they just make those plays. But, you know, just seeing the defense, knowing what to do, you know, that will separate me from him. And what did the last part you had said? If you had the choice, because we always get the politically correct answer, uh, any team that will pick me up, if you had the choice, be honest. I play running back, you know, that's, that's my position. Well, no, no, no. If you had the choice, where would you like to play? Running back. Oh, where would I like to play? I mean, yes. I don't know. I like to play ball. <laughs> I'll play anywhere. Cassie? Hey, Kenneth, you kind of alluded to it earlier during the presentation, but how much weight did you put on um, over this offseason? And with opting out, were you able to key in on any part of your game more so um, than you would during a regular season? Uh, me opting out, I put, probably, I, put, I put a little weight on, you know, uh, just doing being, being smart with my nutrition, being smart with how I hydrate. Um, they kind of, you know, played a role in it. Um, I mean, you know, just continue to like eat healthy, you know, they kind of put on a little bit of weight, you know. So. All right, we'll do two more, Sean. Hey, uh, Kenneth, congratulations on really getting to this moment, but do you think you become, I guess, a better football player being able to sit back over the past year and really evaluate yourself? Uh, a little bit, you know, um, 
being out from football, you know, just being not able to get that contact with other guys. I mean, that, that is how I, you know, elevate my game. But just being smart with, you know, just how I evaluate myself, how I, um, you know, just create different things, like on the field, just being by myself and just going against smaller cornerbacks or safeties or linebackers when it comes to me just being one-on-one, um, you know, they just how I kind of put into my, my game. Andre, last question for Kenneth. How's it going, Mr. Gangwell? Congratulations on everything you've done. You are truly a dual threat, my brother. Truly a, a dual threat. But my question to you is, what do you say to the naysayers that say you possess an average size and won't be able to handle a lot of carries in the league? Mm -hmm. What do you say to those people who say you also have a small body of work in college? What do you say to those guys? Hey, they better be ready. Those guys will get in front of me and, and do, you know, do it. You know, they wouldn't want to be in front of me, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I don't know, but they go see when it's when it comes to that time, you know, but, you know, I'm just going, you know, I got to be chill on my shoulder, but, you know, I just stay down to work. I'm letting them see it when it comes time to, I ain't got time for all the talk, so I just stay down and keep grinding. Mm -hmm.